Our text is found in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Y'all like to stand as we read that together. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season, Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come. You know what? I kind of believe that we're here right now. The time that the Paul was talking about, I believe we're here. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables father we pray this morning you'll add your blessings to your word we ask this favor in jesus name amen you may be seated now i'm going to read the same text here in the Amplified. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by in the light of his coming and his kingdom, herald and preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. Stand by. Be at hand and ready, whether the opportunity seems to be favorable or unfavorable, whether it is convenient or inconvenient, whether it is welcome or unwelcome, you as preacher of the word are to show the people in what way their lives are wrong and convince them, rebuking and correcting, warning and urging and encouraging them, being unflagging and inexhaustible in patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not tolerate, endure, sound and wholesome instruction, but having ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying, they will gather to themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors they hold and will turn aside from hearing the truth and wander off into myths and man-made fictions. Well, that's pretty straightforward words, wouldn't you say? Amen. Now, <clears throat> there are but two schemes of religion in this world. Now, that word schemes, you can look it up. It means plans. One is true. Out of the many, one is true and the other is false. One is saving the other is damning. These two schemes of religion are free grace and free will. Now I'll tell you what, there's a lot of controversy today, especially when you bring up the subject of free will. Man don't he thinks that he has some kind of a, a will that supersedes even God's will. But I'm only interested this morning in one will. And that's the will of God. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1.
Yes, I will agree. Man has a free will. But, hear me, hear me very clearly this morning. The free will is only in one direction. Down. Down. It, it's not free to go up. It's downward. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things. Now, is that the way your Bible says that? Huh? Yeah. The purpose of God, of him who worketh all things after the counsel of what? His will. So that's what I'm interested in this morning is God's will. Turn to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I didn't have these written down because I didn't know we was going to go here. And I want you to look at verse 28. I want, to, did you notice, uh, did you notice in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11, it talked about the purpose of God. Okay? I mean, everybody's seen that. Everybody clear on that? According to the counsel of His purpose. According to His will. It is His purpose and it is His will. And you know what, folks? I don't have to stand here and preach to you about the sovereignty of God. It is God's will that's being done even right now on this earth. Now hold your place there in Romans. And let's turn over to Daniel chapter 4. I just want to set forth some principles here. Roman, uh, Daniel chapter 4. Just hold your place there in Romans. Yeah. Everybody turn to Daniel chapter 4, verse number 35. Now, brother and sister, that says, when, you, when, you're, when you're talking about God, you've got to know who God is. You've got to be understand some of his attributes that are only found in God. In Daniel chapter 4, verse 35, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, what doest thou? Everybody want to see that? So what is that telling you? What we're dealing here in the Bible is a revelation of the sovereign will of God. All right? Now let's go to, back to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 28. Is everybody there? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to what? His purpose. Everybody see that? Everything is predicated on the purpose of God. All right? For whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, 
whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? That's the question. <laughs> if God, see, that's a big question mark after that. If God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. All right. Now, let's get back to our lesson here on page two. We see here that the, these two schemes of religion are free grace and free will. Free grace declares that salvation is the work of God alone. I don't, a blind man ought to be able to see this. Jonah chapter 2 verse 9. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will say that I have, I will pay that I have vowed, period. Salvation is of the Lord. Now that word salvation is a compound word which means in essence deliverance deliverance. In Psalms 37, verse 39 and 40, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. They don't trust in their self. They don't trust in some religious ordinance. They don't trust in the church. They don't trust in their preacher. They trust in him. Amen. Salvation is of the Lord. It's not in your denomination. Oh, I'm a Methodist. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Pentecostal. Well, you know what? That's not a saying a whole lot. That ain't a whole lot to be proud of. <laughs> but to be a new creature in Christ, that's where it is, folks. Amen. See, this is I'm what I'm preaching to you this morning is Bible doctrine. I ain't got no church that I can point you to. I don't have a preacher that I can say right there, uh, right there's a man. Uh, you listen to him. No. The Bible says, him, he that gloreth, let him glory in the Lord. You know, let me, let me just uh, talk a little bit about what does that mean, glory? Well, you know what we do? If we're not careful, if we're sick, we go to the doctor. And then later on, we're talking, we're talking to people about, boy, I was sick and I tell you, I had this problem, but old Dr. Jones, I'm telling you what, he diagnosed my problem right off, and you know he gave me the proper medication, and I'm telling you what now, I tell you, oh, Dr. Jones, if you've got that same problem, that's the guy to go see. You go see Dr. Jones. What is that person doing? They're giving glory to Dr. Jones. You see what I'm saying? And that's the same what we do, you know. We have an automobile and we it's giving us good of all what we do. We start glorying in that automobile. Boy, I tell you what now, if you want a good car, you go buy the same kind of car I got because this car I got. What we do, we're glorying in that. You see what somebody is you're glorying in something or something or somebody. We're glorying. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. That's what the Bible tells us. But you know what? Most of the time, the Lord's the last one to get any glory. <laughs> hey, that don't cost, that ain't in my notes, and I didn't know it, was, it wasn't premeditated, okay? That's all right. All right. All right, free will. Let's just look now a minute about free will. 
free will declares that salvation is at least in part, <clears throat> I had something to do with it. Bless God. You know what? The Lord saw something good in me. That's why he saved me. Because he's seen it in me. Now, I didn't see it, but he's seen something good in me, and that's why he saved me. If you believe that, I've got a bridge I'd like to sell you. <laughs> or some oceanfront property in Arizona that you might be interested in. <laughs> There's no truth in that, brother. Salvation is of the Lord. It's not the Lord plus what I do or my good works or plus anything. It's salvation is of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Free grace declares that salvation is conditioned upon the obedience of Christ alone as the sinner's substitute. Christ alone. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, brother and sister, this scripture here is misunderstood by a lot of folks. I don't want us to misunderstand it. It says we are made righteous. It doesn't say anything about you being becoming righteous. Amen? Right. We are made righteous. It's what the scripture refers to, like over there in Romans chapter 4, imputed righteousness. Imputed righteousness is something that you don't have, but it has been imputed to you. It has been charged to your account. Amen. Amen. Now look at Isaiah. I love this scripture here. Isaiah 53 verse 11. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servants justify many for he shall bear their iniquity. Everybody see that? That's, that's speaking of Christ. He's the one that bore our iniquities. Amen. He bore our sins in his own flesh. Praise God. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. And I want to read that next verse. I, did, I don't know why I didn't have it on there, but I didn't. Uh, but I'll turn over here and, and give you the next verse too. But notice what this says. But of him are you in Christ Jesus. Oh, I love that terminology, don't you? In Christ Jesus. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. And verse 31 says that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Everybody open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 30 and 31. I want you to see that scripture. I just want you to know I'm not preaching out of Grandma's Almanac or I'm not preaching out of the church quarterly this morning. It's out of the word of God. If any man glory, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Now remember what I said. You're going to glory in something, something, or somebody. But he's speaking to the church here. He said, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. All things are of God. Amen. Your redemption is of God, not of man. All right. Now, let's turn to page three. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 and 19. Therefore, remember that word, therefore. That word, therefore, is a, he's bringing a conclusion here, a conclusion of what he said above. See? 
Therefore, seeing the truth that I've laid out here, Paul is saying, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, what's new about the new birth? What's new about salvation? Well, the fact is, when you are in Christ, you're no longer counted as being in the flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're not in the flesh, but you are in Christ. Brother, that makes all the difference in the world. God's not dealing with you anymore as a sinner. He's dealing with you as a son. Amen. Now I want you to turn to, uh, turn to Romans. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Brother, y'all forgive me for jumping around here, but I just got to, these thoughts come to my mind, well, now would be a good time to say this, Tom. Why don't you just real go over there at the room? Because listen, amen, we all sitting in the same seat. We all are fighting the same battle. And the battles that we're fighting today is mostly inward, in our minds. We're always in a conflict. We're always in a up and down, it seems like. We're always doubting God. We're always doubting ourselves. Amen. So it's good to just pause and, and look at what the Word of God has to say about you. I'd rather believe what God's Word says about me than what I think about myself. Amen. Listen, as long as I look to myself, as long as I look to my flesh, I'll always be defeated. I'll always be in doubt. I'll always be in fear. I'll always, because that ain't, you're a new creature in Christ. You're a new creation. Amen. All right, now, but remember this. The new birth does not eradicate that old sin nature. That's, oh, and that's the thing that most... Christians don't understand. How come if I'm a Christian, I'm still having these same old impulses that hit me that I used to have when I was a sinner? Because that old sin nature is still there in this body of flesh. Now, I want you to notice the, the law that the sin nature is. We want to look at this first. Uh, look at verse number 20. In uh, Romans chapter uh, 7. Well, we'll look at 19 because we want to keep it in context. Because I, I know who I'm talking to this morning. You're people just like me. All right? Well, he's, let's look at verse 18. Then we'll read. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present. There's that free will. Oh, yeah, I praise God. I got free will. For the will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Your free will ain't going to help you here. <laughs> Let's look at it now. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that's what I do. <laughs> how come? You're a new creature in Christ. How come you still operating in that old man? How come you letting that old man raise up and have his way in you? Huh? Have you ever thought about this? All right, let's read on here. Now, if I do that, I would not. It's no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Well, I have you know, I don't commit sin. Well, you know right off you're talking to a liar. Because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Even Christians sin. But let's look at it. Paul wanted to really find the source of his problem. And here he's getting it right down to the nitty gritty. Look at verse 21. I find then a law that when I would do good... Evil is present with me. Now that's what Paul, he, that's when he began to do some real soul searching. 
And he found the real problem was that old sin nature was still there. Look at verse 22. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Well, we all do. We sit and rejoice when we hear preaching, don't we? But I see another law. Now notice, another law. What is a law? It's a principle on which something operates on. A law is an unbinding principle. It will never change. God said about his law, he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one jot or tittle shall pass away from the law until all be fulfilled. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Y'all see that? That law of sin, it, he's talking about a man that's been born again, but that law of sin is still working in his members. Now, how does God deal as a believer as a new creature in Christ, how does God operate with his new creation? All right. He goes on, let's drop down to chapter 8, and let's look at verse number 1. There is therefore, now see, therefore, you got to look up to above. In, ver in chapter 7, what we just got to read, therefore, is looking back to there. So what's being said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. We're under a different law as a new creature in Christ. We are walking after the law of the spirit of life, which is in Christ. Everybody see that? I don't care how many times you've been baptized. I don't care how many churches you belong to. That ain't got nothing to do with what I'm talking about. It's talking about the law of, the, the law of, the, of sin. Versus the law of the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus. There it is. Amen. Now, let's drop down to verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal man is enmity against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Because if you walk in the flesh, you're going to fulfill the law of sin and death. But to walk in the Spirit, brother, is to walk in the life of the Spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. And remember, he said one time about his word, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. The word of God, brother, when you are walking in obedience to the word of God, you are walking in the Spirit. Hallelujah. It's simple, ain't it? But very profound. Amen. I didn't know I was going to, y'all forgive me for that. But amen. Let's go back up here to our text. In, 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 in the chapter, I mean, verse, I mean, page three. Therefore, y'all see that at the top, if any man be in Christ, you, I hope you get some understanding here. He's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now notice verse number 18. 
and all things are of God. How much have you got to do with it, Brother Tom? Nothing. All things are of God. Everybody see that? Salvation is of the Lord from start to finish. Hallelujah. Ain't you glad for that? Amen. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Praise God. Amen. Let me turn back over here to Romans chapter 3. I got that wrote down here. Romans chapter 3, verse number 20. Everybody there? Everybody turn your Bible to Romans chapter 3, verse number 20. I'd like for you to, uh, so you can see that I'm still in the Word here. Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. i tell you what really got me started on this message was a phone call that I got the other day from my friend down there in Mississippi. Of course, I know he's just in the, that's the way he's been, I don't know. I never preached this when he was under my, under my ministry in Salem, but anyway, it's all predicated on the standard of holiness. And you know what? You'll not find that word in the New Testament. Standard. You won't find it. We only have one standard, brother and sister, and that's Christ. He is my righteousness. Y'all see that? It ain't what you put on, wear, paste on, take off in the flesh. All right. In the Philippians chapter 3, verse 9, and be found in him. I'm, you can look at page 3 here of your notes. Philippians chapter 3, verse 9, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, because that is, but that which is through faith of Christ Jesus the righteousness which is of God by faith. Amen. All right. Free will declares that salvation is ultimately and finally conditioned upon the obedience of the sinner himself. Oh, I, this is the way that I was taught as a young man in the Pentecostal church. Oh, yeah, you're saved by grace, but it's all predicated how you walk, whether you stay saved or not. 